Oh, we've got a special guest here Guess on who's the couch. Here? Hello, Miss Perino. So, Dana Perino. So I don't know why everyone's sitting so far away from me. <laughs> You're kidding. You like got why are you sitting so far away from Tucker? What's wrong? <laughs> Come here, Dana. Put it in a little closer. Don't be it's afraid of Tucker. I morning. love being here on Fox and Friends and you to see you, bite. Julia. It's Good thing. So we, we've got to get your view mm -hmm. of what is going on in Donald Trump world. So in, in case our viewers haven't seen, I want to replay the tape. This happened Thursday at a rally he was holding in New Hampshire. First question he took came from a guy who's off camera. We don't see his face, but he asked this, and we've been hearing about it ever since. Okay. Watch. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. Certificate, this man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of it? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. So you saw his reaction. We need this question. Like, he, he's not agreeing with it. Why does he have a moral obligation to defend the president? in this or any other thing. Well, hold on. So, okay, f um, I do think that there's a possibility that this question, that we've never seen the questioner, which I think is strange. I'm like, yeah. okay, so who was this? It sounded, you have to deal with the fact that there will be your fringe on your left or your right. Like, sure. the Democrats have to deal with Black Lives Matter. Right. And on your right, you're going to have uh, possibly things like this. I do think it's curious that this guy hasn't wanted to be on TV since he clearly wanted to make a point. Well, he's and the guy who claims he's me. him emailed me this morning and said, okay. I'm the guy. I'm Let's sure see him. I'd, lo I'd love to see him because I am curious. But, okay. Then Donald Trump's camp say, says that the reason he didn't respond is because he didn't hear the question. But if you look at what Donald Trump just said, he says, like, we need this question. Okay, this so I don't understand. Like he's kind of blowing the guy off. Like, and I can understand next, that. Like, next question, I, that he doesn't next necessarily question, want that. But creep. there was a time when Donald Trump really wanted attention on this issue. Hillary Clinton started it in 2008. The whole birtherism piece, that's where her campaign circulated, the questions about, oh, he was born in Kenya. But Donald Trump took that poured gasoline on it and lit the match. And Republicans have been trying to deal with that ever since. So I think that they should have, number one, been prepared for the question. Number two, I, I don't think that he is going to get away with not talking about it at all. I thought it was clever, uh, his tweet this morning. I think we yeah, have yeah, it here. Yeah, so here's his tweet. Let's read it's, this. So it, it's a good response. So here's Donald Trump's response this morning to this whole issue. He says, this is the first time in my life that I've caused controversy by not saying something. <laughs> I, look, and you know what? For people that support him, I think that that's clever, and they want him to move on. By not going to South Carolina yesterday, where he was scheduled to be, where, he's, where all the other, can well, I think 11 candidates were there to talk to the Heritage, Heritage Action Group, he was scheduled to go. Then all of a sudden, he was not scheduled to go because it was uh, there was a business deal that he needed to work on. Okay, fine. But I think that undercuts two of his strongest points if you're one of his supporters. The first one is that he doesn't back down from anything. He doesn't deal with the, he doesn't uh, succumb to PC media baloney. So there's that. Number but he two, says he's got a big business deal going on. That's okay. why he had to cancel the which, event. Right, which but I'm saying like, all of a sudden. But then uh, it undercuts another point, which is the other night he said, nobody else here has to sacrifice like I do. I'm the one losing business. But basically, it's worth it because I want to be the president of the United States and make this country great again. Well, okay, so then why is the business deal more important so, than he, going to the event? Here's the point that I'm intrigued by. The birther stuff, I agree, is silly, and who cares? But the Christian question is interesting. You've seen a bunch of other candidates and Hillary Clinton say, he's a Christian. How dare you suggest otherwise? Now, I have no idea what the president believes. It's not my business. I know how he acts. You talk to any Orthodox Christian in this country, and I would say the majority of them feel under attack by this administration, which is bristling with hostility toward Orthodox Christianity, bristling with it. I could cite 10 examples. Why shouldn't that be a topic of conversation? Well, I think it could, except for that. I think that you've, uh, it's also been proven. Like, look at Dr. Ben Carson. Yes. He went through the same thing, where he had a huge controversy, where he was like, I, I, he basically whiffs on a question about Obama's re religion. But the thing that I don't understand also is that the Democrats seem like it's such an insult to be called a Muslim. Well, that's such a, that's so that's weird. Such a great point. I mean, it's not an insult to, to be a Muslim. <laughs> And I'm not saying that. I don't. I don't, I wouldn't, no, I don't comment on anybody's personal beliefs. I got enough yeah. problems on my own. I got to work on myself. Okay, right. so Donald Trump is that trying is to deal now with, point, with this, this whole situation. His his tweet addresses it. Now let's move on to Carly Fiorina, sort of okay. climbing up the ladder there and actually surpassing Donald Trump in the uh, New Hampshire poll. Well, yes. Although I think that she's more like it's more like she's done well to bring herself up and maybe which is typically you know, what happens early neck on and in neck these with, with some things. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that still 66 percent of Republican voters say they're still shopping around for a 
candidate. And Frank Luntz and his uh, focus group on Megyn Kelly right after the debate showed that, a uh, show of hands, who here came in planning to vote for Donald Trump? Lots of people raised their hand. How many people here have changed their mind? Lots of people raised their hand. So people are still sort of window shopping. So there's a lot of fluidity here. Right. But they haven't bought the dress yet. Well, what about the criticism from the other candidates, uh, Scott Walker and uh, and others, saying, "Look, this was pre-planned that they were going to uh, wanted Carly Fiorina this narrative from CNN or whomever in the media that that she did well in the Fox debate, and so we're going to propel her to the front of this. That's why everyone's talking about Carly Fiorina. Is that them just being well, sore losers? Would, I think that would be persuasive if she hadn't done well, but right. she did do well, she did and do she really well. earned uh, her spot at the CNN debate. She was um, very good in the debate, and also she's been working very hard. Not that the other candidates haven't. I do think Scott Walker has a legitimate complaint. This is a governor that got two questions in three hours. Right. He interjected five times. He deserved a little bit more. At that same Heritage Action event that I was mentioning that Donald Trump didn't go to, um, Scott Walker got great um, reception. People said, oh, this, I actually want to hear from him. He's back in Iowa tonight. I talked to his team this morning, and they think that you know, this focus on Iowa could show that there's some movement there for them. Really quickly, do you, I, I was so impressed by Fiorina. I think a lot of people were. Mm -hmm. Is she, is this enduring? Is this a real yes. thing? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I think that absolutely. Way. And she, it, because it's not um, built on a house of cards. Right. Right. She's been slowly building this up, and as people got to know her, her name ID is increasing. She, she deserves that place on the stage. Huge Google spikes from people searching, wanted to know more about her record when she was, she was attacked by Trump and Christie on her record mm -hmm. uh, as CEO. So we'll, more on that. But meanwhile, we're going to have you stick around if we can, because we want to talk about Hillary Clinton this morning, Hillary Clinton's campaign. Campaign struggling, rumors swirling that Joe Biden ready to run. Come. Back with us now, the lovely and talented Dana Perino, co host <laughs> of The you. Five and author of And the Good News Is. Good morning. Nice to again. see you this morning. What is the good news? <laughs> well, you tell us. <laughs> well, for Joe Biden, it may have been, maybe the turning point was that Colbert interview the other day, which, by the way, if you haven't watched it, I mean, it's a really touching interview talking about the death of his son. And while he didn't really think that he could emotionally handle running for president, he thought, that he was still too caught up in that and he wasn't emotionally prepared to run for president. He had to give 110 percent and he didn't feel like he had it in him. What's changed? Well, I think what was so touching about it is that it was so authentic. You know, yeah. two weeks ago, the Hillary campaign had to put out a statement and a story to the New York Times saying that now watch, now we're going to be spontaneous. We are planning to right. be spontaneous. But Joe Biden was just authentic and people can connect with him. I actually think that uh, he can wait until after the first uh, Democratic debate that takes place in October, so that he could actually wait until November 1st to get in. And I think part of this also is that the Democrats are very worried about what is going on with Hillary Clinton yes. and her campaign and her ability. She is not improved. She doesn't ever improve as a candidate. Mm. Her numbers are bad, but also she's got a, five federal investigations. They need a backup plan. And so I think that uh, Joe Biden, one, I think he wants to be president of the United States. I don't think it's just because Hillary's not doing well, but I think that he is inching towards. Um, Announcing. But we're in a moment, I completely agree with you, and I think Democrats deserve a real choice, um, and I want them to have one. So but we're we. in a moment of identity politics, and here you have a, a white guy from a Rust Belt state, pro-union, who goes to church every day in his 70s. That's not the modern Democratic Party. Does well, he have but, a shot? Well, but you could have just described Bernie Sanders. You could, but Bernie Sanders appeals to like left-wing college students, which is still a component of the Democratic right. coalition. It's a small one, but it's a real thing. Is Joe Biden, can he command any major segment of the Democratic coalition? He absolutely can because there are enough people in this country that really want a third Obama term. Huh, and he would be able to bring all of those people together. He actually is quite unifying, um, well, I think, as a, as a Democrat. I mean, Hillary, you know, I mean, honestly, because of what happened with his son, Hillary's kind of been holding back and has been actually complimentary and yeah. said that he was very authentic and he was very real. So when do the gloves come off after he does announce, if, if he does indeed announce? I, I, well, it'll, her, her team is very good at opposition research, okay? And there's plenty there, but the thing is he's run so much that there's a lot out there and sort of right. feels like also with Hillary, like, there's not much opposition exactly. research you, left to do. How do you, I'm curious, so how would you differentiate yourself? Both members of the Obama administration, how are they going to, on a debate stage, be able to debate differences among themselves? I mean, well, Joe Biden could say, I'm not under five federal investigations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a differentiating point. Right. But, I didn't destroy Syria. Yeah, yeah. You know, her team is in a real bind because they've been putting her out more. She was on CNN. She's going to be on Face the Nation tomorrow morning. She um, did Mario Lopez, and she's doing the Des Moines uh, Register Ed Board on Tuesday, her first time in, I think, a year. So 
they're having to put her out to do more. The problem is the numbers show every time they put her out more, her a, a approval number goes down. So what's the, the, what's the solution? Get Bill Clinton out there instead, in her stead? Uh, this is what I think is amazing. How could it be that Democrats want so much to elect the first woman president so that they could get Bill Clinton back in the White House? Right. It doesn't make well, sense because to me. he's a major feminist and friend of women. <laughs> it's sad, though. How much would it hurt your feelings if the more people saw you, the less they liked you? Yeah, I mean, that, that would be bad. Yeah. I think there are some people like that with me. <laughs> Stop That's that. not true. There's we probably one that. watching right now. We'll hear from it him in a minute. Great to see you, Dana. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Dana. you. I love Join being the club, here. sister. <laughs>